Greetings, boys and ghouls. Happy Halloween, and welcome to a Custom Conquest Showcase Spookulation Special Edition. I'm your host, Call TJ. <laughs> Ow! <laughs> Sorry about that. I probably should have seen that coming. Halloween's always been one of my favorite holidays. I mean, what's not to like? Getting to wear cool costumes, candy, can't forget the candy, and the occasional playful jump scare. <laughs> I probably should have seen that coming. Thanks a lot, kids. Now I'm gonna have to change my shorts during the commercial break. I'll admit, when it comes to video games, I'm not really much for the horror genre. Although, there is one ghastly game that released for the Nintendo GameCube that made a lasting nightmarish impression. And that game is... Eternal Darkness, Sanity's Requiem. Playing through this terrifyingly twisted title still tops the charts as one of the most horrifying and dreadful experiences of my life to date. Somebody please get that thing out of here. <laughs> Good dog. Nah, I'm just messing around. Just a little Halloween humor for you. I didn't think it was that scary. I gotta stop doing that. I probably should have seen that coming. Anyways, today's creepy custom comes from another ghoulish GameCube game that launched alongside the system back in 2001. Luigi's Mansion. A short but memorable mansion crawl that balanced fun and fright in perfect measure. I remember really enjoying my time with this devilish departure from the standard Mario series fair when it first released and was eager to investigate the frightful follow-up for Nintendo 3DS in 2013, called Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon. While I can't say the second installment recreated the magical and mysterious charm of the original for me, Dark Moon does level up Luigi's ghost vanquishing vacuum, the Poltergust 3000, to the high-powered Poltergust 5000. That's exactly 2000 better. It's math, baby. Pure and simple. While the Spectre-filled successor of the series was widely well-received, the original Luigi's Mansion was too good of a game to be forever limited to haunting just the GameCube alone, so a remake was developed for the 3DS and released in 2018. In addition to a couple notable new features and quality-of-life improvements, this updated version added amiibo support. So I thought it was high time Luigi's Mansion received a proper amiibo treatment. It took Nintendo 17 years from the release of the first Fright to create the spooky sequel, whereas I customized a Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon amiibo faster than any other custom I've ever created. So let's get this creepy card on the course to unravel the mystery of exactly how I pulled off this trick. And after that, stick with me for a little Halloween treat as I team up with you to create a brand goo custom concept inspired by the upcoming Luigi's Mansion 3 for Nintendo Switch this Halloween. Halloween. Let me set the scene. Like many scary stories, it began on a dark, stormy night. To escape the cold, wet rain, I took refuge in the cellar of an old, dilapidated house that some superstitious locals might describe as haunted. Okay, I might be overdoing this Halloween scream theme just a bit. Real talk. It was actually the middle of July, only days before my family's relocation from Chicagoland, Illinois, to Taipei, Taiwan, a small island off the coast of southern China. My awesome wife Natalie and I were desperately trying to tie up loose ends in preparation for the big move, which also included packing my somewhat extensive amiibo collection for storage. You could say my wife was the brains of the operation, and I was more or less just tackling the various tasks she assigned me. Everything was progressing relatively smoothly until suddenly, her phone rang unexpectedly. We put the packing on pause. Who would dial us at such an ungodly hour? She picked up her phone, pushed the circular green accept call button, and slowly, tentatively, raised the device to her ear. Who could it be, I wondered? For all of 10 seconds, until I realized it was her mom, that is to say my mother-in-law, who was joining us in Taiwan for a couple months to help get us situated, and seeing as how we were still sorting out a whole host of details, her call was absolutely in no way unexpected, strange, or mysterious. As they began their conversation, I found myself without the direction of my brilliant wife to guide me, so while I waited, I decided to clean up my customizing workspace for what I knew would be the last time for quite a while. My mind wandered to all the custom amiibo figures I had intended to make, but just never found the time. When I caught sight of my Metacom Series 2 ultra-detailed Luigi's Mansion Dark, moon figure. I bought it a few years ago with the intention of making a simple custom conversion, but never actually got around to it. Amidst my mess of incomplete custom projects, pieces, and parts, set a few amiibo bases, including a Mario series Yoshi amiibo. I had already removed the figure, opened the base, and extracted the NFC chip. I knew I didn't have enough time for any kind of in-depth undertaking since I needed to be ready to roll the moment my wife was off the phone, but I decided to challenge myself to see if I could complete a Luigi's Mansion custom amiibo figure before she completed her phone call. I was off to the races. I grabbed a Smash Brothers Luigi amiibo, but since I was exclusively targeting the NFC chip, the Mario series Luigi would have served just as well. I deposited him into a pot of boiling water for about a minute, then used a thin butter knife to pop open his base to retrieve his NFC chip. As I mentioned, my Yoshi amiibo was already unlocked, so all I had to do was simply swap the tags. The Metacom Luigi comes with his own stand, and I could have just stuck the NFC chip to the underside of his base, but I wanted to go full amiibo. I'm in love with how expressive the Metacom Luigi figure is, and the dynamic pose really captures the essence of the game series, though the position can't be maintained without a little support, including 
included with the Dark Moon Luigi figure is a thin plastic rod that feeds into the bottom of Luigi to help him remain suspended in mid-air. I found the support to be rather brittle, and mine broke sometime shortly after opening it. But it didn't really matter since I had no intentions of utilizing it for the amiibo. Instead, I employed a handrail to create a hole in the smaller of Yoshi's footprints, as well as the bottom of Luigi's left shoe. Then I fed a small screw through the bottom of the platform to connect the two pieces together. Nearly a perfectly flush fit and secure as could be. I filled Luigi's other footprint with a tiny helping of modeling material to provide a flat finish. The unaltered gray tone of the epoxy sculpt was rather discreet amidst the two-tone checker pattern of the Mario series base. I rotated Luigi on his support leg to position the other foot over the filled footprint to lend the impression that the print was his, and I actually quite like it. All said and done, I easily crossed the finish line in under 10 minutes. The entire process took less time to do than it took me to describe it just now. <laughs> my wife soon wrapped up her chat, and as we got back to packing, she noticed my new Luigi's Mansion amiibo, and said something like, Wow, I've never seen that custom before. It looks great. Thanks, I told her. That's because I just made it while you were on the phone. I'm over the dark moon that I managed to sneak this last minute custom amiibo into the collection just under the wire. So much for that quick trick. Now, let's move on to a player two treat. One of the most exciting inclusions in the upcoming Luigi's Mansion 3 is the addition of Luigi's gooey green doppelganger, Gooigi. We were first introduced to Gooigi in the 3DS remake, but in the eerie iteration on Switch, Gooigi joins Luigi as he explores the haunted hotel as a core function of the upgraded Poltergust G00. A second player can even assume control of Gooigi to provide Luigi with not only some much needed backup, but also some welcome company. So what I'm proposing here is that we join forces to construct a custom Gooigi amiibo to provide our Luigi amiibo with a gooey ghost busting buddy as well. I'm going to detail my approach, and I want to invite you to add your ideas in the comments section as well. And who knows, maybe someday the culmination of our combined efforts might be fully realized in the form of a custom physical creation. Generally, my first step when designing a new custom is to define a point of reference or inspiration. In the game, Luigi demonstrates a high level of viscosity and appears to be at least semi-translucent. This presents a bit of a problem when it comes to customizing because the only way to allow light to genuinely pass through the figure is to construct it from a translucent material. Now, there are certainly ways to do that. We could cast a mold of an existing Luigi figure and use a translucent resin, or we could generate a 3D model and use a 3D printer. But I don't think that's the route I want to go for this. For the past several years, Nintendo's really gone full-on atmospheric immersion when promoting their top titles at E3, the Electronic Entertainment Expo held annually in Los Angeles, California. In the past, this has included the recreation of a small slice of Hyrule from Breath of the Wild, the streets of New Donk City from Mario Odyssey, and most recently, a visit to the haunted halls of Luigi's Mansion as they debuted the first playable version of Luigi's Mansion 3. Amidst the eerie ambiance stood a large pair of character installments, one based on Luigi in his LM3 likeness, and the other of Luigi. Instead of going for a jello-like translucent effect, the artist evoked the impression of a slimy, wet, gooey viscosity with the use of shading values and a high-gloss finish. As soon as I saw this impressive gooey guy, I thought he was destined to become an amiibo, even if that meant customizing him myself. Now that we know what we're trying to build, let's see about gathering the materials. Even though Nintendo's only released two Luigi amiibo, the first being from the Super Smash Bros. line and the other from the Super Mario series, there are actually quite a lot more Luigi figures to choose from than you might initially think. In addition to the Metacom Dark Moon figure, there's a whole handful of Luigi figures from the Jack Pacific 2.5 inch World of Nintendo line. Now, tracking down some of these could prove an impressive trick all on its own, but for our purposes here, let's operate on the assumption that we have the means to collect what we need. Unlike Luigi's dramatic expressions, Gooigi is entirely emotionless, and the figure that I feel best captures that is the Smash series Luigi amiibo. And since we need a Luigi amiibo for the NFC internals anyway, we can vanquish two ghouls with one flash. Gooigi's face isn't the only thing void of expression. His stance and posture is just about as neutral as it gets, casting a stark contrast between himself and the custom Luigi's Mansion amiibo. Even though Smash Luigi's awkward and somewhat bizarre pose isn't that different from this Gooigi effigy, I'm not sold on his textured overalls. Not to mention we have that obtrusive support to contend with. The Smash Luigi's shoulders appear tense and rather squared, as opposed to Gooigi's completely relaxed stance. Smash Luigi's hand and finger position looks like he's ready to start karate chopping at any moment. I still think these pieces are quite suitable, but I think I'm going to be able to achieve better results if I use the Jack Pacific 2.5 inch standard Luigi figure. Actually, you might be able to find the same sculpt in a few different color schemes. And since we're going all green in the end anyway, it doesn't really matter which one we use here. So if we're not going with this body, what else is out there? I like Jack Pacific's 2.5 inch running Luigi. I think his legs could be easily removed, repositioned, and patched. Even his arm situation isn't bad, but all things considered, I keep coming back to the Metacom Dark Moon figure. His legs are similarly positioned to the running Luigi, and just as easy to adjust. But with the added benefit of the Poltergust 5000, which serves as a great starting point for the Poltergust G00. To get the legs in the correct position, let's remove them at the point where they connect to the body, and 
and reconnect them at a point that more closely matches the Guiji from E3 with a hand drill and paperclip armatures. To keep him off his tiptoes, I'll score the ankle where the shoe meets the cuff of his pants and insert a small block. We can fill in any empty space with some modeling compound. Let's remove Dark Moon's head and arms and replace it with Smash Luigi's head and the arms from the 2.5 inch jack specific Luigi. Already Guiji's shaping up pretty nicely. Now to upgrade the Poltergust. Let's disconnect the hose from the back of the vacuum and reattach it to the side with some super glue. For the goo tank, I'm gonna look to an inkling amiibo. I think almost any of them could work, but I'm leaning towards one of the inkling boy amiibo from the original Splatoon series. Let's pilfer his ink tank and with some careful hollowing out of the poltergust, we can insert inkling's tank right in. I might be tempted not to tamper with the original nozzle at the end of the hose, but to more closely match the Gooigi reference, I could take the tip off of inkling boy's splatter shot and convert it into the poltergust straw bulb. I think that's what it's called. We can also remove the handle from the nozzle and relocate it to the top of the backpack. As a final measure, to add a little more dynamism to what's otherwise a rather bland pose, I'd like to break away from the reference material a little and embellish the base with some extra goo. For this, I'm eyeing another classic Splatoon amiibo, the Squid. I've employed the Inkling Ink Splat before for my Majora's Mask Zora Link amiibo, and I think it could really go a long way to bumping Guiji to the next level as well. It'll also dramatically expand our options when it comes to selecting a base. Since the ink covers such a large portion of the platform, just about any Super Mario series amiibo base would do the trick. For Guiji's G to show up, it needs to be an additional layer, so I'm gonna carefully cut a G out of some electrical tape and stick it right on there. Now let's paint this gooey guy. I think our best option in this case is to go with some spray paint. Whenever I do full spray paint coverage, I always start with a primer to encourage an even application. There are a lot of options when it comes to neon green. Typically, thin layers are preferable for preserving detail, but in this case, we actually want to reduce detail to a certain extent, so I'm gonna continue to add layers of neon green to shallow up some of Luigi's creases to more closely match the smooth appearance of Gooigi. Once I get a nice even base coat on there, I can detail it with some hand-painted highlights and shading value. If you really felt so inclined, you could even give Gooigi a glow-in-the-dark effect. And to seal the deal, we want to create the impression that Gooigi's goo is slippery and slimy. So I'm going to glob this guy with several heavy coats of Mod Podge gloss. And hopefully, when all is said and done, we end up with something that looks relatively similar to this. Even though Luigi's Mansion 3 doesn't support Amiibo, there's still the stellar remake of the creepy classic for the 3DS where we can put our Luigi's Mansion-inspired Luigi and his partner in grime, Gooigi, to good use in game. Thanks for joining me on this Custom Conquest Showcase and Spookulation Special. It's fun to let my creativity run amok on occasion, and I hope it was fun for you too. Don't forget to share your ideas in the comments section. Before I go, I want to draw your attention to this obscure detail I noticed while pouring over the Luigi's Mansion 3 footage. If you look really, really closely, you can almost make out... <laughs> gotcha! Thanks, kids. It wouldn't be a proper Halloween special without the obligatory jump scare. <laughs> you probably should have seen that coming. Wishing all of you out there victory in your own custom conquests, and also a very happy green Halloween. Hope to see you back here again next time. Until then, thanks for playing.